Welcome back students. In today's class, we would learn how to solve this popular Chinese university question, which is apparently a, a viral question. So, to solve this question, what we would do is first rewrite it as integral negative 2 to 2 x cubed times cos of x over 2 times square root of 4 negative x squared times dx positive 1 over 2 times integral negative 2 to 2 square root of 4 negative x squared times dx. Now let us consider the first part. Consider integral negative 2 to 2 x cubed of cos of x over 2 times root of 4 negative x squared times dx. Now I will be using this property which is integral negative a to a f of x times dx is equal to 0 if f of x is an odd function. Now for a function to be odd The necessary condition is f of negative x should be equal to negative f of x. Okay, so this is an important point that you have to know. Now, having known this, if this is an odd function, then the integral quantity would become equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to check, let us check if x cubed times cos of x over 2 times square root of 4 negative x squared is odd or not. Okay, so for that we need to take f of x to be equal to x cubed times cos of x over 2 times root of 4 negative x squared. And then substitute x to be equal to negative x. So this implies we would now have f of negative x to be equal to negative x raised to the power 3 cos of negative x over 2 times square root of 4 negative of negative x raised to the power 2. Now this is equal to negative x raised to the power 3 will be negative x cubed. Now cos of negative x over 2. Now we know that cos x is an even function. Right? So what does it mean? This means cos of negative x would be equal to cos of x. That is the understanding. So this would lead us to cos of x over 2 times square root of 4 negative, negative x raised to the power 2 would give us just x squared, which is nothing but negative of f of x. Now, by condition, f of negative x being equal to negative f of x means the function is odd. So this would mean f of x is an odd function, right? So what does that mean? That means integral negative 2 to 2 x cubed times cos of x over 2 times square root of 4 negative x squared times dx will become equal to 0. So now moving on, let us now consider 1 over 2 times integral negative 2 to 2 square root of 4 negative x squared times dx. Now there is a formula for handling this, but what I would do is I would show you how to obtain that formula. So now we know that integral root of a squared negative x squared times dx is equal to x over 2 times root of a squared negative x squared positive a squared over 2 sine inverse of x over a positive c. Now I'm going to show you how to obtain this formula. Now let x be equal to a times sine theta. Okay, 
So differentiating this would give us dx to be equal to a times cos theta d theta. So therefore, integral root of a squared negative x squared times dx is equal to integral square root of a squared negative. In the place of x, I would be substituting a sine theta. So that would mean I would now have a squared sine squared theta times in the place of dx, it's going to be a times cos theta d theta. This can be rewritten as integral root of a squared, I can take it out. And so I would now have 1 negative sine squared theta and close it with the parenthesis times a times cos theta times d theta. Now this is cos squared theta, right? So this is going to be equal to integral I can rewrite this as root of a squared times root of 1 negative sine squared theta is cos squared theta times d theta. That is multiplied with a times cos theta. Now this is going to be square root of a squared will give me a integral root of cos squared theta is going to be cos theta. I don't need to place this d theta here. There is already a cos theta d theta. So I have an a here, so that means I, it's going to become a squared. That has to be multiplied with cos theta d theta. Now, this is going to be equal to a squared times integral. Cos theta times cos theta will give me cos squared theta d theta. Now, I know that cos squared theta is equal to 1 positive cos 2 theta divided by 2. Okay. There is a formula like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this formula there. So that would give me a squared times integral 1 positive cos 2 theta divided by 2 times d theta. This can be rewritten as a squared over 2 integral. I'm going to remove the parenthesis and rewrite it as d theta positive a squared divided by 2 integral cos 2 theta times d theta. Now, this is going to be equal to a squared divided by 2 times theta positive a squared over 2 times. Now, integral of cos 2 theta would give us sine 2 theta. The coefficient is 2, so I need to divide that by 2. Of course, you need to place the arbitrary constant c, but I don't want to place it now. Now, let me just use the space here. Now, this is equal to a squared over 2 times theta positive a squared over 2. I got a 2 here, so let me place that 2 there times sine 2 theta. Now, sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta times cos theta. Now, clearly, the 2 in the numerator can be cancelled with the 1 in the denominator, giving me a squared divided by 2 times theta positive a squared divided by 2 times sine theta times cos theta, right? Now, we have assumed that x to be equal to a sine theta. So, from here, clearly, I can rewrite sine theta to be equal to x divided by a, okay? So, I would be substituting it there. So, that is going to be equal to a squared over 2 times theta. I will come to that a minute in a minute. So, this is going to be a squared divided by 2 times sine theta is going to be x over a. So, substitute that x divided by a times cos theta. I am going to rewrite cos theta as 1 negative sine squared theta. Now, from here, theta can be rewritten to be as sine inverse of x over a, okay? So, just substitute that. So, that's going to be sine inverse of x over a. Now, the a that you see in the numerator can be cancelled with the one in the denominator. So, we can rewrite this as a squared over 2 times sine inverse of x over a. That's the first part. One part we've got. Positive. Now, this is going to be 
Uh, actually, a squared is already cancelled, so I don't need to write the a squared there. So it's going to be a over 2, right, times, I got an x there, so we can place the x there. Now, root of, now already I've just taken sine theta to be x over a. So that is going to be 1 negative sine squared theta. So that's going to be x squared divided by a squared. So everything is within the square root. Now I can rewrite this as a squared over 2 times sine inverse of x over a positive a over 2 times x. Now I can simplify this, rewriting it as a squared negative x squared divided by root of a squared. So root of a squared is going to be just a. Now clearly the a that you see in the numerator can be cancelled with the 1 in the denominator thereby giving me x over 2 times square root of a squared negative x squared positive this is going to be a squared over 2 times sine inverse of x over a plus constant c so i have introduced to you integral root of a squared negative x squared times dx is nothing but x over 2 root of a squared negative x squared positive a squared over 2 times sine inverse of x over a positive constant c. So now what we are going to do is we are going to apply the c what we are getting. If I were to apply this formula to the other part which is 1 over 2 integral negative 2 to 2 root of 4 negative x squared times dx then I would have in the place of a I need to substitute 2 because this can be rewritten as 1 over 2 times integral negative 2 to 2 root of 2 raised to the power 2 negative x squared times dx. So that's why I said a has to be taking the value 2. So using this formula, this is going to be x over 2 times square root of a is 2. So it's going to be 4 negative x squared positive a is 2, so it's going to be 4 over 2, sine inverse of x divided by 2. Now, the limits are actually negative 2 to 2. Now, we can just place the limits for now. There is a half there, so I need to place the half. Now, clearly, if you see, this is actually an even function. So, if it is an even function, and you have something like this, integral a to a, f of x times dx, then you can rewrite this as 2 times integral 0 to a f of x times dx. So, if I were to use this property, the limits would now be altered and I have to have an expression of this nature, which is 2 times the quantity x over 2 times root of 4 negative x squared positive 4 over 2 sine inverse of x over 2 and the limits instead of starting from negative 2 to 2 would now be rewritten as 0 to 2. So rewriting this the 2's can be cancelled with the 1 in the numerator. So that would now be rewritten as x over 2 times root of 4 negative x squared positive 2 divides 4 2 times. So sine inverse of x over 2 would be the quantity that we would now have. The limits are 0 to 2. Now applying limits we would get apply the upper limit that's going to be 2 divided by 2 root of 4 negative of 2 squared positive 2 times sine inverse of 2 divided by 2. So this is for the upper limit. Apply the lower limit which is going to be 0 divided by 2 times 4 negative 0 squared positive 2 times sine inverse of 0 divided by 2. Now clearly this would be cancelled. This would be cancelled. And in this case, it's 4 negative 4 
this also would be cancelled. So that would give us two times of sine inverse of 1. But sine inverse of 1 is pi divided by 2. Uh, clearly 2 and 2 can be cancelled giving us the solution to the question as pi.